as you have heard, now the audio recording is switched on. And um, yes, uh, for, the, for the attendees not being part of the panelists, uh, we ask you to use the Q&A functionality of Zoom and maybe raise your hand. We will then be, um, it will then be possible for us to maybe even call you in uh, to ask your question, or you of course can post your question in the Q&A window, and we will try to answer and include it within our session. I hope that is fine for you as well. And uh, regarding the recording of the session, of course, any publication afterwards will then be arranged with your informed consents afterwards um, before we put it online. And now it's up to us, Mathieu, to somehow give a, a review of the Digital Health Idea Competition, um, why we did it, uh, our motivation, how how it really works then in practice. And uh, first of all, of course, uh, thank you very much for the participating teams and um, participants in the competition. Without you, we would not have been able to run this very yeah, promising idea competition with a very, very, very good outcome, I would say. Um, yes, and I need to tell that, of course, because Mathieu is online here with me and uh, Mathieu is a team member from the Open Innovation in Science Center from the LBG, from the Ludwig Boltzmann Society here in Austria. Uh, they are definitely focusing on, uh, yes, patient and public involvement, especially, and uh, that's actually a joint uh, activity uh, with them and we were, we were quite happy that we even had a financial contribution uh, from the OIS Center uh, to allow us to run this competition. And uh, my name is Andreas steiner Hochkater. I come from the Ludwig Boltzmann Institute for Digital Health and Prevention uh, in Salzburg and we initiated this um, competition and actually set topics and actually organized the whole process. Um, yeah, what was it about? Actually, it, it was about developing innovative concepts for digital health in young researcher teams. And one of the key elements, as you remember, was working together with patients, experts or experts by experience. And that was some kind of an experiment for us as well. And it was definitely an experiment to run such a competition totally online. Um, that has to do a bit with actually uh, with the fact that, um, yeah, since we we were used to work online um, and learned to work online and collaborate uh, during the COVID crisis, of course. And actually, we wanted to address um, an international audience or young researchers. And that was another reason for running it online. And uh, now even the final event and the award ceremony is an online event. And of course, uh, the motivation for you was hopefully as well uh, to win some prize money. Also, it's not much. It should at least uh, give something back from our side and maybe helps you to even develop uh, some few steps further uh, your activities or whatever you want to do uh, with the prize money. Um, regarding the timeline, it was actually a quite challenging thing. Um, the uh, Originally, the idea competition was um, uh, in uh, a part of our digital health symposium, which we ran last year in Salzburg. It was an online event as well. And there we had this idea to kicking off such an, an, an idea competition online. We had a very first kickoff already before Christmas that didn't um, uh, address a, a wide audience or we were not so successful with, with um, finding participants. And then we had a second kickoff in, in very um, early days in the year 2023. And that gives you the timeline. We had a, a short delay with the jury voting and of course with the final event then as well. But we are quite happy that we are now somehow reaching an end of the competition and can announce the winners because we are quite happy with the submissions and we are eager to even uh, talk to you and discuss with you um, how we can bring your ideas further. Um, that actually covers then the period from, from now up to ju July or summer even uh, with optional follow-up activities for the winner teams. Um, in parallel, um, we had uh, check-in meetings or mentoring meetings offered online as well. The deadline, the submission deadline was in beginning of March. 
Um, in parallel, we had a single messenger group used for the for the participants, and that um, yeah now comes to an end. And um, we have set actually teams, and maybe Mathieu, you can tell us a bit more how we composed the teams, or we wanted to have the teams composed. Yes, uh, thank you, Andreas. So uh, hello to everyone. And I also want to emphasize that for me as well, from the side from the Open Innovation and Science Center, it was definitely a pleasure uh, to accompany and support the whole um, process and project. Uh, but now to the teams, of course. Um, so we said that uh, basically we wanted the teams to consist of like three to eight people so that we have at least uh, two researchers and one patient basically in one team. And of course, eight would be the maximum so that uh, it doesn't get like too big. And of course, which was very central to uh, forming those teams is that, as I said, there was at least one expert by experience because this is basically the whole concept of uh, the idea competition. And especially with the condition um, in like uh, cardiovascular disease, basically. Uh, because this is what the LDI uh, want to focus on. Uh, we wanted definitely to promote it for young researchers. So it was open for um, bachelor students, master students, um, pre-docs, or uh, within five years of PhD. And since we also wanted to promote this like um, outside of the, in, of the Institute for uh, Digital Health and Prevention, uh, we said that the team should not be more than half of like the Institute. And of course, since we wanted to integrate like uh, different uh, term, different kinds of knowledge into the teams, uh, the patient aspect was very important. But what we really wanted to encourage as well were like interdisciplinary teams, um, yeah, coming more from the from the digital uh, disciplines or from the health disciplines or other interdisciplinary fields. So, and as you remember, we set topics as well. Um, so there were two more specific topics. Uh, one was on how to create engaged and engaging heart healthy communities with the help of smart digital tools. And the second one was how can digital tools support approaches to overcoming the prevention paradox within the cardiovascular domain. And the third one was a bit more open, uh, so you, you could uh, as well um, apply with, with ideas in how can challenges in the cardiovascular domain be augmented by digital solutions. Of course, this had a lot, has a lot to do with our institute um, vision and goals. Um, and uh, yeah, actually, we wanted to see what the young researchers are eager to work on and how that can be yeah, and enriched with a patient perspective. And yeah, Mathieu, you can tell us a bit more on, on the patient side. Yes, sure, of course. Um, so, uh, of course, they were like a crucial element of the competition. Um, and why? Uh, because they are experts on the topic. So, of course, the researchers, they have uh, the research expertise and they also have the technical expertise. However, uh, in the end, it should benefit the patients who will basically like benefit hopefully from the results of what is, whatever is being created or researched on. And they have the lived experience uh, and they will deal with the consequences. So it's very crucial to have them involved. So this is why we call them also experts by experience, for example, because it's not just experience, it's really that they also have expertise. Um, and yeah, so it should allow for a meaningful exchange, of course, and a, a respectful atmosphere. And there should be enough time for patients to ask questions and to articulate. So like, thank you so much to all of the patient experts who uh, said that basically they would like to, to participate and to contribute to this competition at this point. And I will also briefly talk about um, the deliverables. So what did the teams who entered the competition have to submit? Uh, so the deadline was on the 5th of March, which is exactly uh, three months ago now, I just noticed. Um, and we uh, wanted to have like two deliverables, uh, which were supposed to be handed in, in English. Uh, so the first one was more addressing, so like the, uh, how innovative the idea is, how relevant it is to the patients and how feasible it is. So uh, how easily like uh, you could really carry it out and implement it. Um, so there, uh, the teams had to hand in a short presentation or as well like mock-ups and first prototypes, which uh, some of the teams did, so, but we will hear more about that later, um, so which is great. But then uh, again, since this is like um, a big focus on patient involvement, 
this was uh, its own deliverable, where basically teams also had to submit um, slides or document on how really the patient involvement was conducted. So we see really like, uh, and how this collaboration um, came into fruition. And of course, we were very much encouraging the teams to co-write this as well, like as researchers and patients together. Yeah, and now some background information on the progress and on the submissions from my side or from the organizer side. First of all, I would like to tell that, um, yeah, for, for us and maybe for even the participants, this has been, of course, an experiment. And actually, even the funding program where we received some funding from the OIS Center is called OIS Experiments or Open Innovation in Science Experiments. So this was actually the first time we run, ran such a um, competition um, totally online. And uh, I need to tell that the focus was from the beginning, it was more on quality rather than on quantity and um, and I need to say that maybe we uh, since we we ran our symposium um, in in November last year and then actually the the um, competition actually was a follow-up activity of our symposium um, maybe we didn't uh, yeah catch the, the the best timing for for this event since then we had the Christmas break and and actually new new year coming and to some extent that was falling as well the, the 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 competition was falling in the exam time at universities and holiday seasons um so it it, it took us some efforts to to keep it running and to 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 win participants and uh, get you engaged uh, from the patient side I, I i need to tell that that was a, a, a real great experience for us uh, we had um, more than 10 patient exper experts um, yeah at the start uh, for this competition and and volunteering um, for the teams uh, we could not even um, switch all the patients uh, to the to the team teams. Um, uh, so we had 36 registered participants. And uh, for the patient experts, I need to, to mention that we ha had a strong support from, from the UK. That, that was really great. And thank you, Victoria, for bringing us together with, with some really um, committed patient experts um, from from UK and and they really brought some magnis um, some some very great input uh, to the to the competition we had finally 36 registered participants as you remember we had this reg registration portal open until um, uh, beginning of March um, and of, unfortunately, yeah, some of the participants and teams did not manage to submit finally. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's due to several reasons. I mean, some didn't uh, meet the eligibility criteria for the for the team compositions. Yeah, some didn't manage uh, to submit in time. Um, but I need to tell that finally we had three high quality and eligible submissions sent to the jury. Then afterwards. And uh, so what we really saw that uh, the, the inclusion of patient experts was was really performed well and, and very good status on that side. Um, yeah, they, they all were composed uh, uh, of young researchers and the efforts the teams took, they were really great. Uh, I mean, they even produced prototype mock-ups, videos handed in. So we saw that there was a lot of work put in from the team side and that was a, a nice thing for us to see and um yeah that's why you're yeah the, the three awarded teams that's why you are here now because you put a lot of efforts in and that is really appreciated from our side and i guess from the jury side as well um yes um from the jury voting um matthew you can tell us a bit more Yes, thank you, Andreas. Um, so how uh, were the best ideas ranked and uh, picked? So basically there was an independent jury and it was very important that it was like a uh, inter and transdisciplinary jury covering different uh, fields like uh, technical expertise and open innovation science expertise, uh, but also like of course the, the health expertise um, and they had different like evaluation criteria, uh, which they based their ranking on. So 50% of uh, the points were awarded for basically how um, innovative, relevant and feasible the project were. And it was very important as well that the other 50%, so half of the points were awarded to how like well the patient involvement was conducted. 
Um, and so we will see later, of course, uh, how that translates to the third, second, and um, first rank. Uh, and so basically, the teams also get some uh, prize money. And so uh, for the third place, there will be like 350 euros for the team. Uh, for the second best, 650 euros. And uh, the winner, basically, the first place, will get 1,000 euros. So when, yeah. Since we have three awarded teams now, then you can be for sure that you will get some prize money, but we cannot tell yet how much it will be or if you will be ranked second uh, or first or third. So that will come later after your pitches, of course. Yes, uh, again, the jury members, we have them on our website as well. We will have jury member statements today from... Luckily, from Victoria Hammer from UK, she's honorary patient and public involvement fellow of, uh, at the Center for Applied Health and Social Care Research from Kingston University in the United Kingdom. And we have, will have another statement from Veronika hornung Brehauser from Salzburg Research. There she's group leader, innovation and value creation. So quite lucky to have them here with us today. Yes, now we will switch over and now I will stop my, my screen sharing uh, because now it's time for the project pitches. Um, we said actually seven minutes pitches for all the projects. I hope that is fine um, for you and uh, we would uh, assign some five minutes for question and answers afterwards for the audience if someone wants to jump in or even for the panelists, of course, if there are questions. Um, there, there will be some time for that. Um, is the sequence okay for you? So we would then start with heartwise, uh, interact, and then heart to heart. Is that fine? I will now stop my screen sharing and then I would hand over to, to the heartwise team. I will allow team um, um, the sharing of your contents or presentations for all of you now, but I would like to keep the sequence if it's okay for you. So let me allow sharing. So yeah, let's call in the Hardwise team, please. Do you see my screen? Not yet. Share. <laughs> now it works. Yes, perfect. So seven minutes, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you. Picture this, a word a world where the prevention paradox is no longer a paradox, but a universally understood principle. Welcome to our entry for the digital health competition. Hardwise is an initiative that harnesses the power of technology to demystify preventative health measures and spread awareness widely. The prevention paradox reveals one startling truth. The majority of people who suffer from a disease or condition were not considered part of the at-risk group. It is a tough concept to grasp and even harder to accept. This is why we created Hardwise. During our ideation phase, we sought the, the expertise of Melanie Roth, a professor in the field of health and nursing care at, at our university. Her guidance drastically reshaped our approach. As we progressed beyond ideation, we realized we could not only solve the problem, the problem of spreading awareness about the paradox, but we could also create a valuable use of time for those in the in waiting rooms. At its core, Hardwise is a mobile application that explains and visualizes the, the prevention paradox, allowing users to educate themselves through an interactive quiz. But how do we ensure people discover our app? We designed engaging posters and flyers that can be placed practically anywhere waiting times occur. With a simple scan of a, of a QR code, people can learn about the prevention paradox and educate themselves on preventative measures for heart health. Now, Hannah will shed more light on the details of our project. So, hi, um, I will continue with the three aspects that influenced our idea. First, I will start with the relevance, then continue with innovation, and finally with the project's visibility. So, surprisingly, none of us were aware of the paradox before this competition, neither were our colleagues that supported us. Followingly, we decided that spreading awareness of this paradox was our main goal. And by that, we want to incent people to inform themselves more so that they can avoid falling into the paradox themselves. 
So now I will continue with the innovational part. So initially we stumbled over the question, where and when could we address as many people as possible with the topic? And in which places is it most likely that we would draw their attention to the project? Meaning places where people uh, have some spare time and just wait for time to pass. First, we came up with busy places like clinics and doctor's offices, but also public places like bus stops or metro stations. Therefore, we created a digital solution with easy access through QR codes on posters leading to our website as seen on the presentation. So um, with a problem and an idea to solve it, the last thing we had to consider was the project's feasibility. Knowing that our idea must be easily implemented, we actively decided to create a web application to make it as easily accessible as uh, to people as possible, since installing an app would probably cause a loss of interest since it's, it just takes its time. And with these three factors in mind, we created our prototype. So for the design, we wanted something simple, but appealing and professional. And therefore we use shades of blue, often associated with trustworthiness and serenity. And as contrasting color, we used a vibrant coral red to catch people's attention and give it a feeling of vitality. Additionally, since our topic concerns cardiovascular health, we created a catchy and detailed drawing of a heart to visualize the topic to the quizzes participants. And now, Joe will continue. Yes, hi, now I'm happy to talk a bit about the patient and expert involvement that we conducted in the process of creating the idea and prototype. We started pretty early on by talking to Melanie Roth, as Dennis already said earlier. She gave us important insights about medical everyday life and talked about experiences and problems of people who need medical attention. And this way, we found a starting point where we could develop our idea from. After we came up with some concepts, we connected with our patient expert. Um, we gave him quite a few interview style questions to find answers and an overview to three main topics. Um, these being how it is to live with a heart disease, which observations he made at doctor's offices and waiting rooms, and if he already knew about the prevention paradox before, his comp before this competition or before he was a patient himself. And with the answers, we were able to refine our idea and come up with two goals. First being um, we want to inform about the paradox in an easy to understand way, which led to the visualization that Tana already showed us before. And we also quickly came to the conclusion to use a digital solution since people in waiting rooms, bus stops, etc., cetera, are on the phones anyways. And this way they can spend mm -hmm time learning about an important subject and simultaneously make the time pass faster. And this led to the quiz that we created and also implemented into the application. After we finished the prototype, we asked friends and family, but also Melanie Darweit, who is a computer, human computer interaction expert, also here at the University in Salzburg. And she gave us valuable feedback concerning usability and user experience of our application. With this additional information, we optimize the user flows and experiences to communicate our message easily and in a way that can be understood by a broad audience. Now we come to the follow-up activities that we thought about. Um, we'd love to make this project a reality and already spend some time imagining how it could evolve, especially because while developing the idea and the prototype, we always kept in mind to be able to expand the system with new modules, informing about other um, important health topics. And this way, sometimes in the future, um, this could be an opportunity to communicate a big range of health topics in easy ways to large audiences. And with this, we already come to an end of our presentation. We'd like to thank you for the opportunity to showcase the project and idea. And thank you for listening. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them now or contact us later. And if you want to try the prototype yourself, scan the QR code on the screen. Thank you. Thank you very much. What a very nice presentation. I will stop screen sharing. Or maybe you can stop because yep, you took over. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, so um, I think. There is some time, and thank you for, for sticking to the seven minutes. Um, I think 
there is the floor open for question and answers. So the audience or even just the participants in, in this um, panelists group are of course free to ask a question. So hands up. If there is a question to the team. Now you have the opportunity to ask. Yes, I see there is already Maureen McGowan. Yeah. Uh, yeah, thank you for the presentation. It was very interesting. And I think I had seen on your slide what you guys had defined as the prevention paradox, but I may have missed it at the beginning. I was wondering if you could define that again, what you mean by the paradox. Oh, yeah, sure. Um, wait, give me a second. I wrote it down, so I have the proper definition by always here. So, um, um, so basically what we wrote is that the prevention paradox and what it is, and we explain it in a way where we're saying um, the majority of people who suffer from a disease or a condition or have a condition um, were not considered part of the at-risk group, which just says that the people who actually suffer from a disease in the end um, consist of a lot of people who are not in the risk group and only a small part of them um, are from the risk group. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does. Thank you. Any oh, more and, questions? And, yes, yes, please. Um, just, ju just to add something to it, because we are never actually showing the prototype um, in its fullest form. We are just showing screenshots. Um, we did um, provide the QR code, and there you can even see the, the visualization of the paradox, which we think um, works quite well. So. Um, if you want to check it out, or if you scanned it, you can see their life and even better. Thank you very much. Any more questions? Uh, uh, not a question, but a, a comment. I mean, oh wait, yeah, it's just actually a question. Could you just show the QR code again? Because I forgot to scan it. Yes, we, we yeah. can share we can share afterwards as well. I, I think maybe <laughs> okay. we can no we can get your presentations as a PDF or so, and then we can share it within Thanks. the group of participants if that's okay. Then sure, sure. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay, from the audience, any question out there? So if not, I say, yes, yes, Anna. I do have a question. So um, maybe a sort of a question to how you came up with it, but since it was a question, what, what the preventive paradox means, um, do you think that making that salient in the poster would be quite difficult maybe for some people to understand? Because the word paradox, I think maybe for the target group, maybe a little bit complex or uh, they would not know per se what that means. Uh, did you look into that or uh, have any ideas about that? Wait, can you just quickly um, repeat the question? Yes, so uh, I saw it in the poster because I, I assume that is the poster that you will use to uh, promote the mm -hmm. intervention. Um, the word preventive paradox, maybe for the target group, may be a little bit complicated to comprehend um, if you are uh, targeting lay people. Mm -hmm. and gotcha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. um, so what we did, um, we, maybe not on purpose, or we, the way what we did is we, um, we said, so the, the poster says, decode the paradox. It was more like it was intended for people to um, be curious about it. Like, what is the paradox? Why should I decode it? What is it all about? So I'm not very specific in the poster or the flyer because I want to raise curiosity, right? Um, yeah. So that people really go the length and go and scan the code. So that, that was their actual goal. Maybe like we kind of made our way around um, Stating it's it, the uh, problem, right? Yeah. 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 Exactly. Yeah. So. Okay, that that makes sense. Thanks. Thank you. Just another question, if there is one. Otherwise, we will go on with the interact team. 
It seems there is no more question. Then thank you very much again to the Hardwise team thank for the you. presentation. Very promising and very nice idea and very good um, deliverables, I would say. Um, then, yes, the floor is open to interact. Uh, you simply take over screen sharing and jump in, please. Um, do you guys see it? Yes, it yes. works. Okay. Oh, yeah. yes. uh, maybe you can. Yes, yes. Thank you. Now you should see it. Good. Great. Then uh, we will uh, start presenting. So our project is called Interact. And today we will give you a quick overview of uh, what we did so far. So our main mission with Interact is to empower patients to adopt an active lifestyle, leveraging innovative digital tools and engaging communities. So we really strive to reduce the burden on the healthcare system and improve the quality of life through the promotion of a culture of fun, but also social connectedness. So the team behind Interact, my name is Anna and I am an e-health researcher. I have recently started my PhD on this topic and I have a background in behavior change and Ian is our patient expert and mentor and Anna is a physiotherapist and is currently studying health assisting engineer, engineering. So our goal is really to empower Heart. So what do we mean by, how do we do this? First of all, we focus on the setting. So really taking into account the holistic approach by inclusion of the healthcare context in order to ensure credibility, privacy, and compatibility of the digital intervention with the uh, patient context. And secondly, we focus on a participatory involvement but also personalization. So because the user is at the center of the digital intervention, we personalize the adaptive an adaptive tool with application, but, but with an application, but also the combination of a sensing interaction, such as a Fitbit that is personalized to the patient's needs. And we also have this holistic approach that looks not only at one aspect, but also at um, behavior change, but also uh, human needs through the social support and biological health parameters. So to give a bit of a background information on Interact, our rationale is to target patients that are at risk of cardiovascular disease. And we do this by increasing their physical activity in a fun way, but also uh, leveraging social support because that is a human need and the target group would make it more interactive but also more engaging for them to make use of the intervention and this will be done in the healthcare context to really ensure the adoption of the tool in a sustained behavior change manner yes thank you thank you anna i will uh, start with the product of our innovation process the final prototype um, as you can see, it is it has a screen where you can see on the top that there's the heart rate, the amount of exercise one did a day, and just different health parameters that you know from other devices, like that you can track on a Fitbit, for example, and uh, the data can be filled into this app and where you can set your, your personalized goals. Uh, so you can adapt to your level of physical physical activity and to your lifestyle. So there are goals that's, that are really reachable for the patients. Um, the other aspect Anne already mentioned is the social support. So as you can see um, in the middle, there is um, a chat function with your health pr practitioner, but also you can uh, but you can also interact with other with other peers uh, in in terms of a body, where you can even build if you want to your own bubble together. <laughs> So you can ask whether you would like to be paired up with a body, and you can um, you can build your own, like your own world in a gamified style, um, which you can see here, um, where you can earn patches depending on which goal you have reached, or um, which things you you've done. 
you've changed in your life. Um, when it comes to feasibility, the implementation would be a multi and interdisciplinary approach. And since there's a big, big market, there's also a lot of competition. Um, when it comes to research, further value and requirement uh, evalu evaluation needs to be done. And also the funding and the involvement of other parties, such as government, uh, partners of the industry, the development, <laughs> And maybe even a partnership with some healthcare centers would be very helpful. Um, the patient involved would take part in all of the steps of our projects. At first, we start with the needs assessment, and we uh, we even in, uh, we involved them in all the steps um, until the project evaluation. We did uh, have weekly meetings on Google Meet. We kept in contact through Signal, um, Anna conducted a patient interview, and we did many group discussions. We used the Meyer board and Canva as digital tools to help in the process. Yes, Anna. Yes, as, as for the theoretical background that we use and the, the steps step-by-step -step process was focused on the CERIS roadmap for e-health development. So here you have a little bit of an overview of our steps. So we started with the literature uh, scan to understand what's already out there and what works, what is effective. And then we understood that the needs of the patient and identified the stakeholders to ensure the implementation early on. Um, and secondly, we... <laughs> I then look into the values of the patient in order to draw on the elements that are required for the development of the interven digital intervention. And we developed the requirements and together at every step, we included the patient and had brainstorming sessions and an ideation process for the design of the intervention uh, using uh, a high, we developed a high five prototype and implemented gamification elements. So the aspect that was mentioned to be fun that was done using uh, reward systems and incentives in the applications, but also behavior change techniques. Yes, and here are um, our next steps. So what we, what I really consider is that although we have gone quite far in the process, we believe that this is an iterative approach and that we have to nonetheless uh, look into further research by conducting a review and also looking at the business model uh, canvas that, that is a model, model that can map out the potential of the intervention in terms of being developed in, in the market or, or in the healthcare system and verifying the technical requirements with an expert. And lastly, I also consider to be of high importance the implementation plan where we can really involve the patient, uh, patient advocates in the process and conduct evaluation and impact uh, on the research uh, of the digital tool, either through feasibility or pilot study. And lastly, I have one final question for you because uh, although I do know a bit of the research behind gamification and uh, really uh, including these fun elements. I was wondering, based on your experience, what is your opinion on the implementation of gamification in the healthcare context for patients? Do you think that gamification would undermine the gravity of cardiovascular disease or would it lead to increased engagement and ad an advancement in the healthcare world for patients? Thank you for, your, uh, for listening. Thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, and not another very, very good submission. Thank you to the team. Um, and yeah, we could see that you put a lot of efforts uh, into your idea, ideation process, even with the deliverables you presented. Um, now, I, I will ask you to stop screen sharing, Anna. And yes. then, yeah, Anna closed as well. Um, uh, closed already with a question uh, to the audience uh, and to the panelists. So is there anyone who wants to jump in? I have one question. Um, here is my hand first. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Fine. Okay, uh, you mentioned in one of the slides that uh, you had a high fidelity prototype. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And, okay. So uh, which platform did you use to develop uh, it and how did you test it with the user? 
Yeah, we did that on Figma. So we made a prototype there and I also made it interactive that there was a flow going from step, step to step. Sorry, Siri, <laughs> going from step to step. And we had uh, the patient um, go through a think aloud method. So we had the prototype open and then they could mention whatever came to their mind as they went through the prototype on the Figma um, link. So that was how we did that. Does that Thanks. answer? Yeah, and nice presentation. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Uh, there was a question regarding gamification. Is there any participant who wants to try to answer that, the role of gamification in this type of apps and solutions? Maybe from the audience, you can jump in as well. Uh, could you repeat the question again? I think I missed it. Yes. So, okay, Game, gamification that is basically using game elements in a, in a health application. Do you think that this aspect of including uh, gamification for uh, cardiovascular patients, is that perhaps um, not taking the cardiovascular disease seriously? Could it be looked at that way? Or would it actually increase engagement of cardiovascular disease patients? So it's a bit of a dilemma maybe uh, because it's quite a serious subject um, when implemented in healthcare and the patients, but it could also be seen in another light. So it's basically a personal uh, uh, opinion. It doesn't have yes. to Yes, I mean, there is even uh, the expression or the, the, the the, the thing serious games yeah yes. so but yeah. i i would uh, pass on these questions maybe to the patient experts or experts yeah. by experience so ian is raising his hand so maybe ian please jump in only you have to unmute your microphone yeah Unmuted. yeah i think when we were talking about that as much as we were visualizing reward and we've seen quite a lot of things over in the uk i don't know if so much in Europe, uh, where insurance companies are incentivizing health. So the likes of if you join their insurance, they give you a, a Fitbit or a, an Apple Watch. And if you if you meet certain goals, you maybe get discounts on the um, on the insurance or they maybe give you incentives to improve your health. So it's not so much even just gamification, it's rewards for improvement and engaging in, in health. Does that help? Thank you. Yeah. Yes, Anna, please jump in. Mm -hmm. And I also think that in, in this intervention, um, the goal isn't to like force the gamification onto someone, but it's it's a part of it. It, it can be a part of it. So if someone chooses not to use it, uh, one doesn't use it. So, and I think if someone, I know, I know a lot of people that are, have some risk factors. I'm working as a physiotherapist and I just recently had a patient um, and he was, I, I, he showed me what he did on a heyday. Yeah. I didn't even know that this game was still popular and in some sort of way, um, it's just catchy and it would be nice if something health related might be as catchy or as catchy in a similar way than a usual a, a normal game would be a fun game and not a serious game yeah indeed. Yeah. yeah i think indeed the healthcare system is not making it not making uh getting healthy or living a good quality of life any fun to do so i think that's something that can be worked upon and and it's about changing the behavior because if someone um, manages to do it for a long time that it com uh, comes to be in habit, a habit, then it usually goes much easier. And then it's not even fun because you get the reward on the phone, but you can see actual physical changes or changes in, in mood and on so many areas which patient, heart patients could benefit from. Yeah. Thank you. Any final statement on that before we move on? Uh, just uh, would like to yep. share a personal application I use. So I come from Singapore and there's a nationwide campaign called Healthy365. It has been running for a few years. 
So it issues uh, Fitbits and other trackers to every citizen, and they can also integrate their own trackers. And it's a gamified approach nationwide for many years. And I still get shopping vouchers for doing active uh, activities. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's gamification at the national national level. You can check oh, it out. Yeah. Real time, real life rewards. Yeah. Yeah. So there's also a component of uh, extrinsic and intrinsic motivation. This is more of like extrinsic motivation where you get actual shopping vouchers or gift vouchers. So yeah, yeah. Just... we try to make that the least important part of the application because extrinsic motivation does not usually last. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, very long. it's quite temporary. Minds the intrinsic part. Oh, when you remove the motivation, uh, that component, then people might stop using your application. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay then, thank you very much. Um, applause to the second team. And now to the final one presenting the project Heart to Heart team. The floor is yours. Please take over and share your presentation. Can you see the presentation? Yes, it works. Okay, perfect. All right, um, good afternoon. Um, we are a Digi Health team and we are very happy to present our <laughs> app design heart to heart. Um, for this presentation, I will first begin with a bit of the motivation behind our app design. Then um, Pavi Tran will go into some of the design features specific to our app. And then last but not least, Rachel, our um, patient expert, will give her perspective and experience working with us. Um, and so now we can jump right in. So the motivation behind Heart to Heart is to provide accessible, safe, and effective support for physical activity among cardiac patients. Um, and here we are specifically leveraging social support because um, social support is a motivating factor for behavioral change. And um, working hand in hand with our patient expert, Rachel, we were designing and collaborating on innovative approaches to incorporate peers and behavior change, specifically physical activity. And here um, I'll briefly present an overview of how our design, our design process and really important to us, we wanted to engage um, with Rachel from the very beginning. We um, focused on a bottom up approach to get her insights into secondary prevention, um, the challenges she's encountered after um, a heart condition and um, how we can use her experience to motivate others with cardiac conditions. So along with um, an in-depth needs assessment, we also did a literature review to understand um, facilitators and barriers to physical activity. And with this, we came up with an initial design and over an iterative approach, over four consecutive brainstorming sessions, we then um, further um, designed our prototype to come up with a final one that we thought um, will empower um, patients to adhere to their physical activity. Um, I will just briefly talk about some of the main um, insights we got from the needs assessment. Um, here we were able to become aware of four main themes. Um, we learned about the need for mental health support after um, a cardiac condition or heart condition because um, um, Rachel explained to us that often this is lacking and there's but on the other side, there are um, peers who have similar um, clinical history and experience, and these were motivating to keep um, her with engaging in her physical activity. We also became aware of a lack of resources and attention in cardiac rehabilitation. Um, not only are there equipment lacking, such as heart monitoring devices, but there's one trainer for um, many patients, and this individualized care is not available at the moment. Uh, we also became aware of mixed emotions with physical activity, especially fear and the need for patients to feel secure and safe while exercising. And then lastly, we also learned of, um, from Rachel's experience of a general positive experience of digital technology. She mentioned during COVID that the British Heart Foundation offered challenges online and many patients perceived this as um, helpful to kind of uh, learn about group challenges that they could participate in if they were interested. And also that um, smartwatches are readily used in um, among cardiac patients um, because of the benefits of um, having the heart monitoring aspects. Um, so now moving on, I will um, let Pavitran talk about the design features. 
Thanks, Hannah. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. All right. Thanks. So, uh, uh, like <clears throat> Hannah mentioned, we leveraged on the lived experience of our patient expert ratio for most of our design process. So I will highlight most of uh, our key design features <laughs> over the next few slides. And we get, we went through a lot of iterations with uh, Rachel and thanks Rachel for giving us the uh, valuable comments, <laughs> which made this uh, prototype possible. So the first element we looked at was maintaining social connections and like what the previous uh, team mentioned, social element was one of the key factors. And she mentioned about how she uh, takes part in uh, uh, activities together with her friends, sometimes like going on a walk and so on. And we thought about how we could integrate such a feature, like finding a buddy who has similar interests or similar uh, heart condition so that they could go out on activities and they can discuss about these things and uh, just having a companion to uh, embark on these uh, endeavors. And also in the second screenshot, you can see that they could also keep track of uh, how each of them are progressing while they are doing so. Next, we have the smartwatch interface, which is a companion uh, where they can motivate each other. And this uh, nudges uh, through uh, the emojis which they pre-select from the application could use to just uh, push each other further and then uh, engage in long-term behavior change for physical activities. So next slide. As Anna mentioned, uh, patient safety was one of the critical factors and we allowed uh, end users to send uh, reports about symptoms might, they might face while doing a particular activity. For example, if they go for a walk and they had uh, some uh, sudden uh, symptom like a heart pain or something like that, they could immediately attach this information to their report and send it to their nurse, which is not so critical. But in case they have an emergency, we also have an emergency function where uh, critical information could be displayed on a screen so that someone nearby could assist them. And one last thing was the mental uh, health uh, support element where we give them easy access to a mental health support hotline, which is predefined by the healthcare provider who enrolls them into this application. So similarly, in the smartwatch interface, uh, we have the emergency feature and the contact nurse feature. The contact nurse feature actually opens up the uh, mobile application screen where they could attach the annotation and send a report. For the emergency, by default, if they don't react within 12 seconds, we could send a message to trusted contacts they might have set within the application. Next slide. So, one of the uh, another element mentioned by uh, Hannah uh, by Rachel was how she took part in uh, challenges set by the British Heart Foundation, and this helped to actually uh, socialize with others over Zoom and so on. So now, since the pandemic is over, we incorporated the feature where they could easily sign up for events uh, organized by organizations in the neighborhood and they could see critical information such as the distance, the date, and who is organizing it. And this is from the smartwatch interface. And next in the mobile interface, they could keep track of challenges they have signed up for. So these challenges are top down where it's uh, set by an organization and goals are individual level, which is based on recommendations set by the healthcare professionals. Yeah, so these are the key design elements we have integrated. So finally, for heart to heart, we are trying to achieve three main goals, which is to foster heart healthy uh, habits through social technologies, offer personalized goal settings and leverage on social influence uh, to have healthy behavior change. And finally, support patient safety during physical activities. So now I'll pass it to Rachel to give her uh, uh, feedback about the design process. Uh, just quickly uh, give my feedback on if this really was an application, how helpful it would be to me. Um, I love the aspect of sharing challenges with like bodied people rather than those ultra fit people at the gym. Um, this wonderful heart device would make myself and the heart community feel understood and important, uh, which we, we don't really feel important. Um, and the app literally brings the cardiac community together so that the emotional and the physical challenges are shared between us. 
Um, if this existed, it really would be life changing. Um, yeah, I think it's a it's a fantastic app design. That's all from me. Thank you very much, team. Thank you very much. And with that, we'd like to conclude our presentation. Here are all the 10 team members who've contributed. And we are yeah, very happy that you've listened. And if you have any questions, please let us know. Thank you very much to the Heart to Heart team. And yeah, we clap our hands um, for this project submission and idea submission. And thanks for all the effort you put in. A very promising work as well. So it seems to be a tight race. Um, and now we would like to switch over to statements of involved patient experts. So the floor will go to Ian McNaughton. Ian, would you have a statement for us, how you perceived and how you enjoyed being part of the, the team and the ideation process? Yeah, okay, if I can just uh, read out what I've written. Uh, my name is Ian McNaughton and I'm the patient expert mentor for the team Ian Anna. I'm 62 year old and live in Scotland. Why do, why do I think I was qualified to be an expert mentor? I had high blood pressure in my early 40s and less than 10 years later I'd experienced two heart attacks within a year, within a year due to blocked arteries. One was 100%. The second heart attack I had was a major one and I had to be helicoptered to James Cook Hospital to have a stent to save my life. Quite an experience for me and an even more one for my partner, now my wife. I now live with moderate heart failure, which is a daily challenge. That was all 13 years ago. I now mostly retired. I like to think I can give back something to the medical world in the hope that my lived experience knowledge can help and perhaps can have, a, have more prevention than cure. Also, any ongoing interaction with health professionals is swift and efficient, and we can have data shared as appropriate with all interested parties. I often forget, forget the important things when asked by professionals, and now I record as much health-related data as possible. Apps and sensors in my iPad, iPhone, and watch help. With that, I'm a tech geek, and all that is not an advert for Apple. Other brands are available. How did I get involved? I first inquired at the end of November 2022, I think after getting information from the British Heart Foundation, I emailed the Institute and was invited by Andrews to put my name forward. Nothing happened for a month, so it was a quiet Christmas waiting, but I was keen to start. In January 2023, we were all invited to the kickoff event, but some time different confusion, I missed it, lesson learnt. Andrea sorted that out shortly after I was introduced to Anna and Anna to form a team. As a bonus, we were both called Anna. There was only one name to remember. We had early support meetings hosted by the Institute. The brief was very broad and the Institute accepted the we will know what we want when we see it kind of attitude. There was no wrong answers. It was becoming clear it was more about collaboration as content. As Andrea said, it was quality over quantity. I knew we had a good team with a good mix of psychology and physiology. I was not just a mentor. They made me feel an equal and valued member of the team. Our combined names became the team name. We didn't really need to use that bit, but it did make me feel valued. There was no major language or accent barriers. Anything that the team were not sure about was all questioned. I was amused to exp um, it was amusing to explain some of my Scottish English saying and words, uh, and they, they took all that on board. I was aware of the tight time scales and our first few meetings were intense. There was a lot of questions, all appropriate, nothing too intrusive or personal. How did I feel about this? How did I feel about that? What could be done better? But mainly what I valued, I liked that. Getting to grips with new software as much as getting to know each other's strengths and few, if any, weaknesses. What work and other pressures would have an effect on the workload? I had confidence that the team was being supportive and we had each other's backs. The team always took time to consider each other's work and non-work priorities and time pressure for online meetings and online tasks. I never, offline tasks, I never felt, hang on a second, who's this? 
Hey, I never felt under pressure or any stress. It did give me something to keep my mind focused and I felt my time, effort and input was always valued. Technically, I mainly used an iPad, occasionally with an iPhone to multitask. There was some limitations, but it was more than adequate for my part. I'm sure if I had to do more, a laptop would have been necessary. After each meeting with much brainstorming and prototyping, I was off. off. I often was always looking forward to seeing what the output would be. It seemed a lot to take on board, but the next meeting I was always amazed that the output always met my expectations and the team worked hard to tweak and polish the output. When the deadline date arrived, I was confident that there was a professional and polished entry and I could sit back and wait. And I could sit back and wait the result. But after a few weeks silence, I had to put my thinking cap back on. The team had a final pitch to do and I had to give an involvement statement. This has been my most stressful part. So thanks to Anna and Anna and also Andreas and the rest of the Institute. Would I do it again in a heartbeat? So thanks to everybody involved. Thank you very much for the very nice words and your statement. And thanks a lot for contributing to our idea competition. I think that was a very good experience for all of us and lots of learnings for the teams, hopefully. And uh, yeah, there is uh, maybe another statement from Rachel Jarrett. Do you want to tell from your side as well a bit on your experience you've made? Yeah. Um, so I'm Rachel. I'm 52, I think. I keep forgetting. Um, I'm in the east of England. Um, like Ian, I've, I'd say I've got moderate heart failure. Um, I've got congenital heart disease discovered when I was about seven had two lots of valve surgery, endocarditis, which is um, infection of the heart lining, and um, got a pacemaker. So I, I feel I know a bit about heart stuff. Um, so my experience with the heart to heart team, uh, well, it really has been, been great with the lovely Hannah, Maureen, Jess and Pathotrend. Uh, I found it a totally enlightening experience uh, participating in the competition um, and I want to say a bit about how I perceived the com competition process and the interaction with the team as well. Um, at first, I won't lie, it felt daunting um, to have been accepted into the competition and match with the team suddenly it was real so so it did feel rather daunting but then i quickly felt very useful and felt and felt part of the team and the competition um the process as ian said was a bit um slow to start uh what with christmas and everything uh and uh there weren't a lot of teams at the beginning but suddenly there were and it, and it just all got going and it was great um with my actual team, everything worked like clockwork. Uh, emails and meeting updates were just set up every few days. I've, I've nothing but praise for the team, for the, uh, the organisational aspects. I'm surprised with how smoothly it ran, ran and I'm surprised uh, with myself. It was a real confidence boost. It was just easy. It was, it was you know, there was a lot of work to do, but it, it flowed easily. Um, I would like to do it more. Um, I felt really valuable. And I think this type of inclusion, um, I, I bet it's not always done um, when developing such things, um, but it makes total sense to, to include a patient participant, I think. The team listened to me. There was no kind of them and us pecking order like uh, you sometimes get with a patient versus consultant you get that kind of them and us there was there was nothing like that we really worked as a team i felt like they needed me my input and they valued me they integrated me i really was a patient participant and not just a sort of token addition the process was really efficient considering there was no timetable as such apart from the the actual deadlines uh it was all made up as we went along obviously times deadlines etc but there was no stress it just worked uh, i actually looked forward to each meeting 
uh, found it strange when, when it all stopped. I love the way everyone con contributed and shared using their strengths. And we quickly and efficiently designed um, what I think was a, was a great app design. Um, and then we all, again, using our strengths, added to and tweaked the content and streamlined the details. And also it was fun. <laughs> so thank you to, uh, to the organizers and thank you to the Heart to Heart team for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for your statement. Very nice to hear applause. To the patient experts, we had Amol from the third team uh, in the audience as well, uh, but thank you for the statements for, to both of you. Um, yes, we are getting closer to the award ceremony, but before that, we will have some short jury member statements as well. I will now give it a try uh, to share a video message from Veronika Hörn und Prehauser from Salzburg Research. She's an innovation expert and I'll try to share the video and please send me a message if it does not work, but we hope it will do so. Good afternoon, a warm welcome to all of you and greetings from the International Conference of Professional Innovation Management in Slovenia. That's where I am right now. That, and that's the reason why I cannot be with you today. My name is Veronika horn preherzer and I'm heading the Digital Innovation Research Group at Salzburg Research. In this function, I was invited to evaluate your project concepts and as a research institute, as an applied research institute, that also supports innovators after the ideation phase, I had a close look and an eye on the feasibility and scaling potentials of project concepts. Well, the jury used four categories whereby innovation, relevance and feasibility accounted for 50% of all your points. So let's start. How new and innovative and original is the idea? Very often, confusion arises in idea competition juries when jury partners have to evaluate the novelty or the degree of novelty of an idea. Is the idea already known to the world, to the jury partners, to some communities, or is it new to a market? In my view, all of your project ideas, based on coaching methods and strategies used already in the field of sports, but and you did a very, very high job and a good job to transfer these new concepts in a new setting in medical uh, field of cardio and heart health and mental health. And this is a very, very great achievement because there is a lot of needs out there to develop digital coaching uh, settings and methods. How relevant is the idea to the target group, your users, your patients? In my view, all three project concepts are highly relevant to patients and also their coaching and medical partners because you need them. All three teams took a good effort to produce a slide deck and a video to capture systematically all these very, very um, close user needs and the statements of your users you involved or the patients you involved. In my view, all project concepts have a good potential for implementation since you choose digital tools that are already out there of the market. You also took a very, very good effort and produced of high quality mock-ups and functional prototypes so that the sort of minimal viral project can be feasible and visible. Maybe you could give another thought to another business model logic, which does not depend so much on public funding. There is private investment out there. Maybe we can work on that a little bit more. Summing up, let me stress that the jury acknowledges the great effort and commitment of all your teams in coping with the process from ideation to user needs identification and producing a first prototype. Well done. This makes an idea visible. Congratulations to all three teams and competition organizers also for the high quality of submissions, your dedication and the seriousness in which the potential of digital innovation was experimented here. I wish you a good 
evening and a great party afterwards. No, so I hope that worked and you could hear audio and video and see video, of course. And yeah, we say thank you to Veronica for this video statement. And now the floor is open for Victoria Hammer from United Kingdom, Kingston University, um, who was jury member as well, and especially from the patient expert side. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm the honorary patient and public involvement um, fellow for the Centre for Applied Health and Social Care Research at Kingston University, London in the UK. My patient expert by experience um, comes from having had an acute stroke from which I have been hugely fortunate in my recovery. I'm really happy that the Ludwig Boltzmann Institute um, by stipulating that a whole 50% of marks is allocated to, and therefore put at the very heart of the competition, has emphasized the need for and importance of the involvement of lay people with cardiovascular conditions of patients in the process of ideation for each of the projects. This is so important. Um, as the patients are experts on the project, since they both live with and deal with the consequences of the conditions during their daily lives. That is why I am so delighted to have had the opportunity to see these projects, the ideas and the many processes which have been undertaken in order to develop them and to hear the voices of the people you're seeking to help. I'm starting my comments with Heartwise, a very clever title which aims to encourage people to get wise to what the heart does. Um, the project exhorts people to hold it carefully, don't break it, take care of it. And the proposed poster advertising Heartwise, reminding people to use Heartwise, is very apt and catchy. Don't be heartbroken. The program asks users quiz questions um, in a question and answer game format um, and then provides the answers. The concept of using the program in order to reinforce gaining information about the workings of the heart, for example, while waiting for any appointment, maybe for a GP or for a medical consultation or for a bus or train and not wasting that time is a good one. What is also good is that it can be a sociable occurrence. Um, the user can share the results with their friends. The patient involvement for this prototype project has included participation in research by means of questionnaires. My view is that for further development of the project, it might be worth considering approaching additional patients and the public perhaps from a different setting or settings, and hear their comments, including how to test the prototype and the ease of understanding um, the, the, the wording of, of the quiz, proposing ways of making it more everyday language, and whether they have any suggestions they might like, might like to make about the layout and the color and the font to help people who may have visual impairments. The idea of not wasting time and at the same time improving one's knowledge about the heart is laudable, well done. Now I turn to Interact. It looks to do what it says. It allows for a high degree of interaction between users and health professionals and even users and other patients bubbles and buddies. It has links with health iPhone data and has hospital records. It allows for self-monitoring and personalizing goals, alerting the patient if the increased blood pressure is recorded. It can, for example, send an alert <clears throat> excuse me, to both patient and health professionals if a parameter reaches a predefined um, limit or remains too high 
and it can send a warning and advice to the user to contact their health professional. It can even notify directly their health professional to contact the patient if the parameters stay at a high risk. It seeks to look after the user. With regard to patient involvement, there was plainly good dialogue between the team. They even, you even, produced um, a separate patient involvement document showing the integration of the patient experts' ideas, including interactivity to increase motivation, yes, accessibility of medical experts' chat function to facilitate contact, connection, and sharing bubbles with bad buddies, that's good, and a gym discount rewards, motivating, good. The patient expert brought many skills, for example, IT and digital, along with a lived experience. For future development, it might be beneficial um, to involve further patient and public involvement, maybe by way of a female patient expert. And it might be useful for the patient and public contributors to look at whether the illustrations are or could be made attractive to various different age groups. Go for the fun and possibly to consider in some way amalgamating ideas with the final project, which I'm commenting on, which is Heart to Heart. This is an all talking, all dancing type of concept. Heart to Heart can talk to or and message cardiologists, GPs or cardiac support groups. There are many helpful options connecting in person or virtually. It includes the mental health services phone number on its cardiac rehab app. It reacts quickly. If the patient presses or user presses for emergency help, it will automatically switch to the profile of the individual with important information, which will help the emergency personnel to know right where. Patient involvement. The patient expert's role was very noticeable. In the patient involvement document, in the slides, in the video, the patient expert's considered opinion had a crucial and wide-ranging wide -ranging influence on the outcome of the app. Heart to Heart has articulated and produced in detail the requests and preferences of the patient expert. I was very impressed by the explanation of the reasons why <coughs> excuse me, the patient expert gave her suggestions and by <coughs> the practical response given to them. As above, I wondered if the development of the project might be furthered if additional patient and public contributors, including perhaps a male patient expert, were to look at whether the illustrations are or could be made attractive to a variety of age groups. This leads me to suggest that Heart to Heart might like to consider whether it might be beneficial to both its and Interact's projects to see if any common ground in aims and addition of patient expert could be scoped. And it was good to hear the patient expert's appreciative review of her experiences of working with the team. And as a last thought, to all three teams and to researchers in general, may I raise the, the question of whether in the future you could consider adapting your work so that it could be relevant to children and young people from whom some patient experts by experience um, could be sought as well as general young people, patient and public involvement, such as through the European Young Persons Advisory Group and there's a website, EYPAGnet. You have all put an enormous amount of time and effort into this competition within a very tight time scale. It has been a real privilege for me to see the thinking behind these three projects and the initial construction of the concepts. Whilst I feel for each project, the involvement of patients could be even further strengthened, it is evident 
that the voice of the patient has been strong and fundamental and can be heard in each project. With very, very many thanks indeed for inviting me to comment. And now I expect you'd like to know who's won. Thank you. Thank you very much, Victoria, for your talk and for all the efforts and engagement in the competition. Uh, and this goes out to all the jury members, of course. Um, yeah, you did a great job. There was a lot of material to screen uh, from the projects. And uh, of course, then you had to do the ranking and um, to be transparent, uh, actually, on, on each of the four categories, um, there was a ranking from one uh, to 10 points. And then this was weighed, as uh, said, in, in, in the um, uh, on the web page with this 50% on this innovation thing and 50% on the patient um, expert involvement. And yeah, thanks to all the jury members. And yeah, thank you. Uh, I can tell from Pavitren as well, from, from one of the team members. Uh, I think they have appreciated your feedback now. And yeah, now we are getting close and I will now share again my screen. And I will, so does it work again? Yes. Um, and I will now hand over to Mathieu for actually presenting the ranking and the winners. Yes, thank you so much, Andreas. And thank you to everyone uh, for the pitches and also for the jury members. Um, and of course, as well, like for uh, yeah, the, the patient experts for their statement. It was very, very nice to, to hear the first time experience. And now I am here. Uh, to present the rankings. So uh, this is a pleasure for me. Um, so Andreas, I would just ask you to go to the next slide already uh, because I think everyone is waiting impatiently. Um, so basically uh, then we start with the third, of course. Uh, so Andreas, just click again so that we see the, the nice bronze medal. So who's like on uh, the third place basically, uh, which is going to be Heartwise. So congratulations to the Heartwise team. Uh, for and also like the entire team for the 350 euros um, that you will get basically. So uh, this is a very nice achievement, very like positive reviews from the jury as we heard as well from the two uh, statements before. Um, so uh, I think just also looking at the time, um, we will go on to the next one. And of course, if I announce then the second one, we will all know which is the first one. So maybe a little bit of a drum roll, like, you know, <laughs> just to see who will be second and then, of course, who will be first. Um, so without further ado, Andreas, yes, it's heart to heart. So congratulations for this uh, second place, basically. Uh, you like It was a very, very, very close call as well, of course, with our winning team which then is basically interact. And also, um, yeah, thank you so much. And also, um, uh, Andreas, uh, since we're uh, in this virtual meeting and there's not a lot of sound, I included a little audio button, which is at the bottom uh, right. If you click it, maybe we can hear the, the claps and sounds and cheers that I included in the slides. Would you hear the applause? Yes. The applause goes out to all the teams, of course. Yes. Very tight race, I would assume. And I saw the ranking, it was really close. Yes, exactly. It was very close, like for the three of them. And of course, as Andrea said, this is for everyone. Um, because of course, so heart to heart, then uh, the team won 650 euros and the winning team in the first place interact won a thousand euros. However, the follow up options after the ideation process are open to every team. Um, so yeah, I think this is it from, from my side. And so thank you so much everyone for participating. Andreas, I don't know if we should just take interact and maybe just ask for a small statement since they're the first uh, place and then we can go to the follow-up options. Yes, the interact team, any short statement, jump in. Um, yes, thank you very much. Um, I think we put in a lot of time and a lot of effort and Thank you, Anna, for all your effort, for all your work. Um, and Ian was an awesome uh, patient expert. And we, uh, I, I'm very, very happy with the outcome. And I hope you think, I hope, I'm happy that you think so too. So, yes, Anna. Yes, this was a really, really nice collaboration and project that we did. 
together and put a lot of effort in and I'm I was just happy with this experience this shared experience that we had together in an applied setting because coming from academia you don't get to really apply your knowledge as much as I would love to so this really gave that opportunity for us to develop uh, something an idea that we had yeah it was really nice <laughs> Ian, do you want to jump in as well? Yes, um, I'm speechless. Um, I can't express uh, my thoughts probably loud enough that this was well deserved. Um, Anna and Anna were like graceful swans. They did everything so smoothly, but underneath um, they were working very hard and it's well deserved. And it's been a, an honour and a pleasure to work with them. And as I say again, very well deserved. Thank you. Okay, then thank you very much. And congratulations to the winner teams. Uh, yeah, and yeah, to stick to the timetable, I will speed up a bit. And actually, there's only a, a one slide left regarding the follow up and follow up options. Um, and yeah, first of all, I would like to thank all the teams. Um, and of course, one of the first activities will be the transfer of the prize money, of course. So we will get in touch with, with all the teams and we'll ask you for the bank details of one of your team members. And uh, I guess you have good collaboration and you will then share or whatever would you do to, with it. Um, and as you are aware of, we would like to offer, and this is really optional, if, if you would like to have it, um, we would like uh, to arrange half-day online workshops with the teams to maybe discuss uh, the potential and future activities around your ideas and maybe yeah, for you an option, an opportunity to get additional feedback from experts and stakeholders. Um, what we would like to offer as well, there is some maybe some money left. Um, actually, we could spend on... yeah additional funding of follow-up activities if as long as they are focusing on open innovation in science or patient and stakeholder in, in inclusion. So when we discuss together, maybe in the workshop or in an, 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 via another channel, um, we, we could align some of these activities and there might be some additional funding um, for, for these activities. And yeah, maybe Mathieu, you would like to give some info on the last item here on the slide. Yes, just very quickly as well. Uh, so basically, as Andreas mentioned, uh, this was also like an OIS experiment, right? Uh, and so this is also a great opportunity for us to learn from you. Uh, so which is why we will come back to the project teams and to gather some insights basically on how the ideation and the involvement process work as well. Um, so we will definitely come back to you with a questionnaire. So in the next time. Okay, so it's up to us to say thank you very much to all the participants, to the jury members to the patient experts. Of course, we will get in touch with the patient experts as well for um, refunding of some of the activities. Um, thank you very much. Uh, we really appreciated the competition and maybe there will be another one in one year or two we would like to run. Uh, then we will come back to you as well. Um, Yes, uh, again, thank you to the Open Innovation in Science Center for all the collaborations around the idea competition. And as well, thank you to the United Kingdom, of course, for the strong support from the patient side, even greetings to the British Heart Foundation, where some of you are linked to. Uh, we really enjoyed that. Um, it's now it's 1730 sharp, but I would give if there is a final question or statement from the audience, there would be an opportunity for one or two um, otherwise, we would close this session and we'll come back to you um, regarding the follow-up activities. Thank you very much. I think that's it. Thank you. Have a nice evening and have a nice party, of course, to the winner teams. However you do that, um, online or with a physical meeting, maybe someday. Um, yeah. Thank you very much. and. Have a nice evening. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.